Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to clearly be looking at kinetics. So this is for the AS module. Now there's a couple of main things what this topic tries to get across to you. One is why most collisions aren't successful and the other is the factors which would affect the rates. Now you should be aware of what rate is. I've drawn the graph up here. Rate is defined as change in concentration divided by the change in time. Now how you would work this out from a graph, which we need to take tangent. So with that, I can now work out my change in concentration and change in time. So if ever you're asked to define it, you can put it in words if you want, but the equation's just as good. And you should be spotting pretty easily what the unit for rate would be. Concentration, measured in moles per decimeter cubed. Time, measured in seconds. So the unit comes out as... moles per decimeter cubed per second. Now we're going to talk about why most collisions aren't successful. There's three factors which they need to meet in order to have a successful collision. And these are defined in the collision theory. One is they actually must collide. Easy metaphor, everybody's got their own favourite, some probably can't repeat in this video. Imagine you're walking down a street and there's somebody coming up the street beside you. And you pass by each other. Do you do anything? No, unless it's a very pretty girl, I might whistle, but otherwise nothing happens. So if there is no actual collision, then no reaction is going to take place. So if two particles are floating about, don't collide, then they're not going to react. They don't care if each other exists or not. Second one, even if a collision takes place, if there is a very slight contact, again, imagine you were walking down the street, somebody gently brushes off your shoulder, do you do anything? Chances are, probably not. If you get angry and start shouting and swearing, then you're a prick. Learn to calm down, seek help. The world will be a nicer place. If, however, somebody runs down the street and literally just shoves you to the floor, you land flat on your ass, what do you do? Chances are, you're probably going to get up and hit them. Perfectly entitled to. However, remember, hands up, wave hello to CCTV, and then it's self-defense. So with that, what I'm trying to demonstrate there is you need a certain amount of energy for a collision to take place. So any slight contact may not cross the activation energy barrier. However, high contact, and then a collision is going to take place. The third factor is called orientation. Now we don't mean some molecules have sexual preferences and are going to go around and decide that looks a bit camp, don't want to go there. What we mean is using some little scribbled molecules here. We have got ethene and hydrochloric acid. Now in order for this reaction to take place, the hydrogen has to come near the double bond. So if the chlorine's fat ass bumps into there, or here, or the hydrogen comes in this way, no reaction will take place. A reaction will only take place if the hydrogen hits the correct position and hits it with enough energy to actually cause the reaction. So that is the three main factors about why most reactions don't occur. They need to meet all three. Now what we'll discuss as well is factors which could affect the rate of reaction. There are five to look at. We'll work our way through them one by one. First one, pressure. So imagine you've got Five people in red jumpers, five people in blue jumpers walking around in a room. Every time the red and the blue jumper bumps into each other, they have a hug and they form a new product. So they are all bouncing about. How could we make them collide more frequently to try and increase the rate? Well, Indiana Jones style, I could start shrinking the walls. So decrease the actual volume in which they've got to move. So I'm increasing the pressure. Now with that increase in pressure, then they are more likely to collide. They're more likely to collide, they are more likely to react, and thus the rate will increase. Another factor. Concentration. Works in a very similar manner to pressure. Again, imagine you've got the room, five people in blue, five people in red, Without changing the actual pressure, so I'm going to keep the volume the same, 
How can I make more collisions and more reactions occur? Simple, I invite some more people with red and blue jumpers in. So now we've got 10 blue, 10 red, let them bounce around. More of them should be colliding per unit of time, thus the rate will increase. Third factor, surface area. Now this should explain a bit for you about why some of the medicines you actually take are in liquid or powder form rather than all being solid capsules. Sometimes it's just to help them get to correct parts of the actual body, other times it's to do with the rate. So increasing the surface area increases the rate of reaction. That's why if you want something to take effect quickly, inhale it. Now you can actually work this out mathematically about if you want to prove it to yourself by why this is the case. Imagine you've got a big Lego brick. So two by two by two. If you count up the surface area around all of that, it would come to 24, whatever your unit is. If however we took this Lego brick and broke it down into eight little one by one by one chunks, So we have eight of these little fellows. Then the surface area of one of these is six. How we have eight of them. So eight times six. So notice the surface area is massively greater. What this means is there is more points of contact. So more reactions can take place per unit of time, thus bigger surface area, more collisions, faster rate. Now there is two more factors. I'm going to show these using a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So you should be aware of what your axes are for this. You have number of particles on the y-axis and energy on the x-axis. Notice it slopes off, do not cross the axes. The reason for this is effectively can go off to almost infinite energy. EA, we have defined what activation energy is several times. It is the minimum amount of energy for a reaction to start. You will get two marks literally just for saying that. Again, monkey marks, as I said, chimps can remember things, outsmart the chimps. Otherwise they will take over the planet. So two marks, minimum and to start the reaction. So the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution shows us a couple of things. Shows us the most probable energy and also how much will actually react. So the activation energy, this is the energy it needs to start a reaction. So this value here. Anything with a higher energy value will react. So the area under here is the amount of particles that will react. Under the graph represents the total amount of particles. So when you are asked to actually show an increase or decrease in temperature, which we will do in a moment, make sure your area is exactly the same. Do not draw it out accurately. It is a sketch, but it should look the same. Now, I want to show the effect of a catalyst on this. So the definition of a catalyst, it provides an alternative pathway with a lower activation energy. It does not change the original. The original is, is still there. It provides a new one. I will show this on an enthalpy diagram. So notice that is your activation energy originally. If however I had a catalyst Start and end points are the same, however the amount of energy which I need to cross this barrier and start the reaction, as you can see, has decreased. So the catalyst will help things cross this barrier easy. If the catalyst isn't about and two molecules or compounds bump into each other with enough force, they can still go by the original. 
However, catalysts work extremely quickly, so the majority would go by the aerobic pathway. So, back to how we show this on a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. As we said here, the area under that part of the line there represents the total amount of particles which are reacting. So do I move this barrier to the right? Think about what that would do to the area. If I moved it to the right here, the area would decrease. Does that sound logical? If the catalyst is providing an alternative pathway with a low activation energy, then surely more should be reacting. So, I would move it to the left. And as you can see now, the area to the right of the line has increased. So that shows the effect of a catalyst. Now, if we're showing the effect of temperature on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, temperature has quite a large effect on the rate. There are two factors in effect. Because if you heat something up, you're providing more energy. So things will move faster. So if again, if we imagine the people in the room, if they are running about crazy, then they are more likely to bump into each other. The main factor, however, is the energy it provides. If you imagine two cars, two little cars, coming at each other at 20 miles an hour, they bump into each other. Somebody gets some whiplash, perhaps put in a claim, probably falsely, but nothing major. If, however, I keep the mass of the cars the same, but decide to accelerate them towards each other at 80 mile an hour, then kaboom, we have some dead people. But in effect, that is our reaction starting. So how we showed on this? What we need to show then is any particle would have a higher energy if we are dealing with a higher temperature. If I move this line to the left, then where the lines crossed and came down, the energy would be lower. So what I do is I move all of this line to the right. I squish it down and pull it here. Notice, still starting at the axes, still sloping off, not crossing this line. You will get everything incorrect if you do that. And obviously, again, not crossing the axes. The area under the red line is exactly the same as the area under the black line. You should, however, be noticing, if we look at the original activation energy, the area under here is greater than the area under the black. So T1 is a higher temperature than the original T. Should quite easily be able to guess now, what would be happening with a lower temperature? Well, with a lower temperature, the energy of the environment would be decreasing. So what we do is we squish everything to the, the left-hand side and it ends up getting pushed up. So notice the actual peak height has risen with a lower temperature, but it's quickly dropped down. So wherever I draw a line across to actually touch these, the red line in the T2 case would be lower than the original temperature. So T1, higher temperature, and T2, a lower temperature. And that is a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. That's all you will need to be able to do with it. And that is all for kinetics.